And so it begins. It is time for the Dark Knight to rise. Okay, Digi 8 cards, we've got four copies of Pagumon here, which has that on deletion, letting you reveal the top card. If it's a black Digimon, you get to add it to your hand, otherwise it's in the back to the bottom of the deck. You're gonna be chipping away with your rookies quite often when you Digivolve into it anyways. So being able to have that kind of like pseudo draw, which is always really good for the deck. And yeah, still mainly just the best generic black egg that you wanna be running. Now, as for rookies, we've got four copies of Monotamon right here. This is your main searcher of your deck because it reveals top four on play. You get to grab two cards that are either black with Nightmon or Deadly Axemon in their names or Twilight in their traits to your hand and then you send the rest to the bottom of your deck. This card you always want to be hard playing because it's your dedicated searcher of the deck ensuring you grab your pieces, multiples of them. The more you find, the even better. So you're always going to be looking forward to see this card in your, the early stages too. And as for the rest of the rookies, we're playing four copies of the Dolramon, the promo one, which gives you a security effect at the end of battle. You get to reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a four cost or less Digimon, that is black, you actually get to play it for free and then add this card to your hand. If it's not, you basically just add that other card to your hand as well altogether and giving you quite a bit of value overall, which is really good. And being able to play a bunch of four costs or less stuff is really what this deck is all about. So when you get to get, do it, it's definitely a lot of value. Playing four copies of Chikurimon, also kind of like a security bomb, D Digivolve 1, which can actually help you out a lot, especially when you're D Digivolving quite a bit with this deck overall to control and delete your opponent's Digimon altogether when a combo and synergize with the effects is really good. It really just surprises the opponent and it makes it difficult, especially when they just climbed into their stacks. Wave 2 is here. We got two new products. You guys love the first series Cyber Zone so much, we decided to make some new color variations just for you. We also have a brand new design for the winter season, where we have our second series, Winter Zero. And this time, it comes with different colorways right off the bat. The new drops are now live on the Evolve Store right away for pre-order, so be sure to check it out. Both new drops have single and two-player versions as well. <laughs> That's it for the rookies. Now let's showcase the level fours, which we have a lot. First and foremost, definitely got to talk about the brand new Skull Knight Mon. That's a promo, which came out recently. And this card is just incredibly good because it has Unleashing, letting you play one Tamer with Amano in its name, mainly being your Nene. And then afterwards, you get to save it underneath. Not only that, your turn while this Digimon has Braggart Army or Twilight's in its traits and level five or higher, it gains security plus one. So you can make a lot of checks and that's the aggression that this deck needed so your dark knight mon can you know potentially close games a little bit faster which is what it was missing it was lacking a little bit of punch but this definitely compensates it which is really really good and yeah four copies is definitely a must have just because it helps you play tamers for free which is always great value when it comes to it there too then we got four copies of the bt7 skull knight mon it does have that when attacking effect trashing all digivolution cards of one of your deadly axe mon to place it as this bottoms Digimon's Digivolution card so they can Digivolve into a Dark Knight Mon for free. And that can come up every now and then. We don't really want to utilize this combo as much. Therefore, we're actually really mainly playing this card, particularly similar to our other Skull Knight Mon, just to gain security plus one. But this one's a little bit better when it comes to Inheritable, just because it doesn't require it to be level five or higher. Next, moving into our other, we're playing four copies of Cavalier Mode. This can Digivolve for one on top of your level four, which you ideally want to, you know, go for a quick burst combo alongside with that Skull Knight Mon, which we showcased earlier to gain security plus one, because when Digivolving, it gains jamming and blocker until the end of your opponent's turn. But not only that, the name of this card can also be treated as a Skull Knight Mon and Deadly Axe Mon at the same time, helping you sort of, you know, fulfill some DigiQuest requirements, which we'll get into as we talk about later on too. But very, very important because it basically is your deadly Axemon for the deck. And then we got four copies of Skull Knightmon Mighty Axe Mode, very similar to the other one, which we just showcased because it can be both name having a Skull Knightmon or Deadly Axe Mon. This one is your on play searcher, revealing top three, grabbing basically one of any card within the archetype essentially, or even one name on them, and then you trash the rest. If you Digicross into this guy with two uh, Digicross requirements, you get to actually pop one of your opponent's Digimon that's four costs or less as well afterwards. And Digicrossing just requires a Skull Knight Mon and a Deadly Axe Mon to reduce cost for one for each. So you can potentially hard play this for two. This is a card you want to see early stage in the game, but it's also a card that you want to float back with some combo effects, which I'll showcase more later on. But that's it for anything that's archetype related. I'm actually not playing any Deadly Axe Mon in this particular deck, specifically just because all the other modes 
actually fulfill the condition of being Deadly Axe Bond, which I kind of prefer anyways, but we'll definitely talk about more about the other Deadly Axe Bonds in the tech sections too. But just to round off, for all the level fours, playing two copies of Mercury Mon, which is our hybrid for game, so that sometimes we want to swing into, we do play a handful of Black Tamers, so having this sometimes is just really good. Also, when Digivolving, you get to gain Blocker with one of your Digimon, it also kind of helps as well. That's it for our level fours, let's talk about our level fives. Of course, we've got the main Dark Knight Mon that we have to showcase. Four copies of the BT-10 one. First, it has on play the Digivolve one on your opponent's Digimon, and then you get to pop one of your opponent's Digimon that's five costs or less. Also, all turns when this Digimon would be deleted by returning one of your level four or lower black Digimon card from this Digimon's Digivolution sources back to your hand, you get to play the other one back out. So it has really good floating capabilities. You wanna synergize it with more of the on play effects, especially when it comes to Mighty Axe mode. That's the one that you always get to wanna play back so then you can use this on play effect at the same time, which is always great. And then you Digicross for two with Skull Knight Mon and Deadly Axe Mon, reducing the cost by four in total. So you only play for memory when it comes to playing this card. And yeah, this is the main boss, this Digimon that you actually want to see as often as possible and as quickly as possible because you can control the board, delete things all at the same time. Then I definitely got still got one copy of the older Dark Knight Mon from BT7. This has that on play effect letting you place a Skull Knight Mon and or Deadly Axe Mon from your hand or trash under its Digivolution cards, but you still pay seven memory. It's not like Digicross saying it's kind of like it, but it isn't. But it has that all turns when this Digimon is deleted, you get to play both Skull Knight Mon and or Deadly Axe Mon from this Digimon's Digivolution card suspended without paying memory cost. So this one can actually float two bodies back. And sometimes you can go for that big combo play when it comes to synergizing with that BT7 Skull Knight Mon as well, which is kind of neat, uh, but you don't really want to focus on that. It's just a nice to have if you can get into it. But that's it for level fives because then let's get into our level sixes. We're playing three copies of Dark Knight Mon X Antibody. One of the coolest card designs and cool Digimon, honestly, I think, uh, made here. I really, really like the alt art as well and the regular art both at the same time. But mainly you wanna be Digivolving for four on top of Dark Knight Mon. And when Digivolving, you get to return one black or purple Digimon card other than Dark Knight Mon X Antibody from your trash back to your hand. And then if Dark Knight Mon or X Antibody is in this Digimon's Digivolution cards, you get to delete one tamer. You can delete your own or you can delete your opponent's, which is gonna give you value when it comes to either. And then you get to unsuspend this Digimon. And last but not least, it also has a on deletion effect letting you play a Dark Knight Mon back from your trash for free without paying the memory cost, which you always will have underneath it since you're digivolving on top of it anyways. And this is your main go-to boss Digimon. When you get into it for clutch situations, you can do a lot of control and do a lot of surprise attacks as well with it, which is also really, really neat. Then to round off for all of the rest of the Digimon, two copies of Death X right here, just perfect for this deck usually to counter against wide boards, the Digivolve and pop and reduce its sort of like hard play cost. Sometimes you can Digivolve it on top of Dark Diamond X as well if you want to, but ideally the wider board your opponent has you can potentially play this card for a much lower cost and potentially for free. Just a really, really good general, uh, kind of almost like a staple for this particular deck, honestly, just because of how good it really is. And that's it for all of our Digimon. Let's talk about our Tamers. We got four copies of Nene for three costs right here. On play, you search the top four, grabbing yourself a card with Nightmon or Deadly Axmon in its name or Twilight in its traits. And then you place the rest back to the bottom in any order. Opponents turn all of your Digimon with Dark Nightmon in their names or Twilight in the traits, gain blocker. That's your main defensive mechanism to help you heavily control the board, you know, sort of, you know, put the game state into your favor, slowly whittle your opponent down and then take them down bit by bit at the same time. So you have a lot of disruptive plays when it comes to the opponent's turn. It has a on deletion effect. You gain two memory, which synergizes with Dark Knight Mon X antibody. So it sort of help you reduce the Digivolution cost when you go into it even further by two, which is always really good. So you can suspend and make attacks uh, for aggressive styles as well. And then we got three copies of the EX4, Kiriha and Nene here. Just a four cost tamer. Both their names are treated also as Kiriha and Nene so that you can actually potentially play them for free, especially when it comes to the promo. Skull Knight Mon, which we talked about earlier, start of your main phase. If there are two or more Digimon on the board present, you immediately gain a memory, which gives you a lot of value. And all turns, it gives you that digicrossing component where you can digicross by suspending them with one source underneath your tamer and one source from your trash. A lot of stuff does end up in your trash because of Dark Knight Mon and everything, everything like that. So being able to utilize your resources from the trash to digicross into potentially something really helps you 
sort of give uh, better access when it comes to going for those combos, which is really, really good. That's it for Tamers. Now let's talk about our options. Two copies of Pride Memory Boost. This card is just really great value just because everything you play, mostly in your deck, are four costs or less so that when you review the top three you can play something very likely out of it you trash the rest which gives you a bit of setup as well because you do utilize it a little bit sometimes with this deck too and then you place it in the battle area with its delay gaining two memory back effectively it's just really really good value there and last but not least we definitely have immortal ruler here which is a really good card for zero cost it does require having you a black and purple source, but if you have a Nene in play, you basically don't have to meet the color requirements. This lets you trash the top three cards of your deck. You get to hard play a Dark Knight Mon from your trash by paying its cost, but you can also digicross it by using sources and resources for the digicross requirements from your trash as well at the same time. So they can, you know, keep your Dark Knight Mons coming back again and again. You guys can even, you know, play an extra copy of this just to make sure you're always cycling the Speed T10 Dark Knight Mon specifically over and over to control your opponent's board, de digivolve them, pop things as well, all at the same time. Again, just gives you extra addition when it comes to accessing Dark Knight Mon all over again. All right, tech choices. We definitely have the EX4 Skull Knight Mon to talk about just because it also lets you play out an NA for free. With its on play effect, if you don't have one, you get to play one from your hand for free. It has that on deletion. You get to reveal the top card of your deck if that has Blue Flare or Twilight in its traits. You get to add it to your hand and then trash the rest, which is kind of nice. It gives you reboot as is inheritable as well, which is kind of nice with your Dark Knight Mon too. So then when you swing for aggressive plays, you can reboot and then potentially have it as a blocker restanding again, which is definitely a pretty decent card to have. Now let's talk about some deadly axe mons that uh, initially I did include but decided to take out just because to utilize a bit more consistency when it comes to my cavalier mode and the mighty axe mode instead. The first one from EX4, trash one card that has blue flare or twilight as traits, you get to draw two cards. It has that on deletion as well, same as the other scroll knight mon, reveal the top card. If it's like twilight and traits, you get to add it to your hand, otherwise trash rest. And all turns, this Digimon gets extra thousand DP, which is kind of neat. And you got the older BT7 one, which on plays, Reveal the top five cards, adding two targets with Nightmon in their names among them, and you place the rest of the bottom in any order. And then your turn, while the Digimon has Nightmon or Bagramon in its name, it gets extra 2000 DP, which is really good. These are really good consistency cards when it comes to help to search, find more pieces, and whatnot. But overall, you don't really need it because you do find pieces very often enough. There's a lot of tons of searching options when it comes to this deck. Other than that, you can definitely play the EX4 Dark Knight Mon 2. This one's not as great, although it can digicross for four costs to hard play, minus two with having a Skull Knight Mon and Deadly Axe Mon potentially playing for four on play, one of your Digimon game blocker. You can also de-digivolve one of your opponent's Digimon, but you don't get to pop afterwards with that. And it has that on deletion, lets you review top two cards of your deck, add one of them that's a Twilight or Blue Flare trait among them, and then you trash the rest. It's just okay, not as good as the BT10 one, which we're mainly focusing our strategy on anyways. Next we got one some spicy here. We got Muso Nightmon, which is not super popular, but it's also pretty good because it can digivolve for two on top of any black level five. So you can stack actually on top of your Dark Nightmon. And this card's Digimon is also treated as having Dark Nightmon and Tuarmon. It has on play when digivolving, placing one Digimon card with Nightmon in its name or Bagger Army traits from your hand or trash under this Digimon, the solution cards. And then if you have two Armon underneath, you get to D-Digivolve one on three of your opponent's Digimon. If you want to play multiple copies, or even like just two of each more, it can kind of help. It can also has that on deletion, returning up to two black or purple Digimon cards from your trash back to your hand so you can recycle pieces too. And Digicrossing with Dark Knightmon and Tuarmon. And you can actually, you know, Digicross with this to, you know, for six costs to hard play it. So yeah, definitely a pretty neat option. I would suggest adding one or two if you guys would like. Then we have War Greymon Ace right here. Just because your Dark Knight Mon is usually your hard playing at level five, right off the bat, you can always kind of surprise your opponent a little bit by blast digivolving and blocking as well, you know, just so you can catch them off guard. You can go for offensive applications to make multiple swings too, if you ever want to. This is definitely a pretty good card uh, when it comes to those surprise attacks. And then as for another Ace card, you can actually also play Dear Bormon Ace. Dear Bormon Ace can potentially also remove your opponent's Digimon as well. You get to play a token out as well. And then you also get to play more tokens when you're attacking. Again, just a really big surprise when it comes to you know coming out and having that dark knight mon so they can access to these ace cards uh so for free digivolutions and basically outplay your opponents too 
Then we have one defense training. We do Digivolve a little bit in this deck, so if you want a bit more like sort of a stack building consistency, this is definitely a good card to add in as well, just because it's a really fantastic staple. One or two copies is what I would recommend if you ever want to, too. And then we've got some spicy blue options. Because you play Kiriha Nene, it does provide you some access of blue sources. Definitely, you can play Ice Wall as one of them. Great security effect, otherwise great main effect. And because you're playing out Tamers for free, most of the times you can access these blue options fairly consistently. And then we got this card right here, Wave of Reliability, which costs two and trash two Digivolution cards from any opponent's Digimon. Then it has a second part to this effect. If you have Joe in play, you get to choose one of your Digimon. If your opponent doesn't have any Digimon with more Digivolution cards than that Digimon you chose that you have, you get to unsuspend it as well. But we don't play Joe in here at all, so we don't really get to do that. But the main combo of this is that, so you can use this to take away any source your opponent has, then then you would play your Dark Knight Mon, de-digivolve them so that you make sure to pop something that's five costs or less no matter what as you're de-digivolving, right? Ideally, if they have a six, you would play this first, take out their five, take out the level four, de-digivolve their six by playing Dark Knight Mon afterwards, and then you get to pop uh, basically their rookie, which is five costs or less anyways, which is really, really good. It has the security effect, you get to activate its main effect, then add it to your hand, so it's kind of consistent as well as a one-off option tech if you want to include it too. All right, combos and how to play this deck. Starting with your opening hand, you want to see cards that can help you search and find pieces. So you definitely want to see your Mighty Axe mode. You want to see Skull Knight on the promo one as well. As long as, as you have either the Nene's in your hand, so they can potentially play it for free. Otherwise, you want to see your Monotamon, and then you might have your Dorumon or Chikurimon, so just so you can digivolve your egg, and that's it. And otherwise, also Pride Memory Boost. Any combination of these cards that can help you search and find pieces early off is really what you're trying to do. You want to establish your board and build it as you go. So, of course, you will hatch your Digi Egg card, and you will digivolve basically only your Dorumon and your Chikurimon. You rarely, rarely want to ever digivolve your Monotamon on top of Pagumon because you want to save it for its hard play effect. It can potentially get you two hits off of it, grabbing you other later game pieces that are going to be really crucial because eventually what you want to be seeing is get, are going to be your Dark Knight Mon, Dark Knight Mon X, and as well as your other Skull Knight Mons and Cavalier Mode 2 as well. So really depending on what you have is how you want to go ahead and play it. So when you find these pieces, otherwise, another way to do it is that you want to be even hard playing this early stages of the game. Even if it was a turn one play and you pass your opponent to four memory, it's totally fine because once you can get enough value off from these tamers, you just want to go ahead and start chipping away with it. And if it ever gets deleted, you would then play your Nene and then you get to save it underneath afterwards because that's what its on deletion effect does. And then by hard playing this Nene, you can search for your pieces and grab your cards. Otherwise, if you play this one, you can put it underneath and you can also use their secondary effect to use it for digi-crossing by suspending them too. And once your opponent sort of like comes out and has like a board established, that's when you want to eventually go into Dark Knight Mon. Very simple. Uh, the sources that you're going to be looking for are your Skull Knight Mon Cavalier Mode and your Mighty Axe Mode, which will actually compensate for being Deadly Axe Mon, essentially. And then you would cross with your Skull Knight Mons, either of the other here. So by digi-crossing into this, for example, ideally, I like to Digicross with Mighty Axe mode just because when you float back, you can play it back as well. So anyways, you de digivolve your opponent's Digimon and then pop a five cross or less, and then you immediately can just swing for two checks, not immediately in the same turn, but once you pass through your opponent's turn and you have Nene, this can be a blocker, you know, this can float back if it ever gets deleted. You can play this Mighty Axe mode back, you can return this one back to your hand, and then your Dark Knight Mon just goes to trash. Skull Knight Mon Mighty Axe mode, hard plays, you search, and you can also potentially digicross it if you want to. If you want to digicross for two, uh, putting two sources underneath, you can also pop your opponent's Digimon with four costs or less afterwards if you do that in the opponent's turn to really disrupt them, which is really nice. But otherwise, if it does stick on the board, like you guys saw earlier, just go ahead and go back to your turn and just immediately swing with it as much as you can. Once you push out with your rookie, you just want to go out and swing with it as much as you can as well. You don't really need to digivolve it as much as usual, but there is a combo that you can sometimes like say, if you have this at the back, digivolve here, and then you can push out early stage. You can go for this early chip combo, digivolve into cavalry mode for one, 
and then go for jamming two checks, which is really, really good, which I really like as well. Same goes with this other Skull Knight Mon. If you ever just like did you cross with into this Dark Knight Mon here, you can also do double checks and it's the aggression that it really needs. Now, keep in mind that this one does require it to be a level five or higher. Therefore, if you go for this combo, it has to be this specific lineup. Sometimes you might have this kind of setup going. And then let's just say you have the older Dark Knight Mon that you can play with too. You can actually go ahead and swing with this and then you place this because it's counted as Deadly Axe Mon as its source. You can actually Digivolve into this particular Dark Knight Mon for two checks as well, which is really, really good. And yeah, this is one of the combos when it comes to Dark Knight Mon combos. Then in the later stage of the game, uh, when you have a Dark Knight Mon on the board with a setup like this, you can Digivolve into Dark Knight Mon X, pass your opponent, uh, unsuspend it because you may, may have made an attack. You can pop one of your opponent's tamers or you can pop your own tamer and by popping your own Nene, you actually gain a two memory back and if you can retain your turn, you can make another two checks, which is pretty aggressive and really, really good damage output, which the game kind of lacked before. And you can actually close games a little bit faster because of that and that's really, really nice. But very, very simple idea. You're gonna be trying to sort of control the board a lot Widow down your opponent's resources bit by bit because you're going to be constantly playing this Dark Knight Mon again and again and again. And by, you know, having blockers on the board thanks to this Nene, you can always keep it sort of like, you know, prolong the game a little bit. Sometimes you might even deck your opponents out. Sometimes you can actually just take out all their resources and they exhaust all their resources. Then you can just continue to go for game and chip them away as much as you can, especially with your rookies too, all at the same time. So if you are a fan of Dark Knight Mon, make sure to get your very own copy of the Battle Vault playmat in the color black variation to match with your Dark Knight Mon deck as well. So definitely check it out if you haven't done so yet. And if you wanna see this deck in gameplay and action, learn how to play it more, definitely watch this video right here, right now. As always, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you next video. And this is Vault, signing out.